All right, so how do you make money as a contractor? First thing you need to do is determine your rate. How much are you going to charge per hour? And this isn't always the same rate, but you know, a lot of times for some of the bigger jobs, you can stay even keel. The simple algorithm is basically you take your yearly gross, what you want to make per year, you divide it by how many, I would say, days, okay? This is assuming we work eight days. How many days you're willing to work per week multiplied by how many hours you're willing to work per day. Typically, eight hours a day, five days a week, okay? If you're a contractor, it's probably more like 10 or 12. Well, let's just make it simple, okay? You minus a vacation. Do you want to take 20 days vacation your first year, 30 days vacation, 40? I've taken three months off at a time just to you know, play Xbox. I can do that because I factored that into my lifestyle and understanding. Maybe you want to travel. Maybe you want to go teach. Maybe you want to write a book, and a book takes a long time. You, know, you can factor that in to your rate. What do I need to make to do this? Okay? doesn't mean that your rate dictates your jobs you get. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but you need to determine that first. Take that rate once you've got it, and there's a lot of other things you can look online to take off expenses, taxes, CPA costs, blah, 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 equipment costs. But you need to take that rate compared to others. This goes back to the network. If you have a network of contractors, consultants, that you can ask and say, you know, look, I'm thinking of charging $50 an hour. These are my skill sets. This is my experience level. This is what I'm willing to do. This is what I'm not willing to do. You know, do you think I could do well? Is this good? Uh, I, you know, I, it falls within my budget. You know, I think this is good for me. Should I be charging more or less? If so, what clients? Where? Right? So you need to bounce it off you know, other people. If they're not comfortable, find someone else. There's always someone willing to talk about it. Use good context, okay? Don't, first thing is, you shouldn't take it personal, but you should take it personal. You shouldn't take it personal if someone else makes more money than you, unless that is your motivation, like goes back to the motivations of making money. But what you should do is understand, can you put a price point to your skill set and your experience and not feel guilty if someone else charges you more, okay? Some people like to compete on price. They say, well, I'm cheaper than that guy. Does that mean you're cheaper in quality? Or does that just mean you're cheaper because you know that he overcharges? Or that you can get the job if you do less? Other people charge more because they feel that that, that, is, that is their self-worth. I just charge more because that's what the market bears. If the market didn't bear it, I wouldn't charge it, right? So you need to have context of understanding. Like, for example, West Coast. West Coast is expensive in the United States of America. I would have to charge 95%, well, really, 195% of what I charge here if I went out to California just to live the standard state of living. Now, I don't live there. Doesn't mean I wouldn't charge that if I worked for a California state client. Okay, so you need to have context of understand what their rate is. If I'm in like Des Moines, Iowa, or Atlanta, Georgia, it's cheap. You know, it's cheap to live here. You know, it's um, especially for equity if you have houses. The price of food, gas, it's just cheaper. Even Starbucks is cheaper. So use good context when identifying your rate. So there's always a question: Should you adjust your rate? Some people have their own internal rules. Some people listen to business people. Other people have no clue and just stick with what works. Um, you should adjust your rate based on your location. This goes back to, are you living in a cheap place? Does that mean you should ch charge less? Not necessarily, but can you afford to charge less if you had to? Something to think about. Your client's location. If your client is in a more expensive area, such as New York, are you going to charge more? Damn right you're going to charge more. Economic climate. Uh, 2001, you think you're going to charge a lot? Probably not. 2006, yeah, you're going to charge at the wazoo. I mean, that was the year of like explosion of flex and flash. What are your expenses and overhead? Do you have very fine taste? You want to go in an Armani suit in front of a client and say, yeah, I'm the baddest programmer this side of the Mississippi, whatever, okay? Is that, you know, can you, do you factor the suit in to your rate, right? Or, you know, do you always want the newest Apple computer ever, right? Is that factored into your rate? Keep in mind, that's a tax break, you know, for a lot of these things. Are you going to buy that? and factor that in. You need, you need to understand what your expenses and overhead are. Your office, are you going to get one? You know, it's a monthly cost. Who's your target market? A lot of design agencies and bigger companies, you know, enterprise on up, you can charge twice what you think you can charge merely because they're willing to pay for long periods of time. The challenge is getting those clients is harder consistently than it is for smaller clients. There's always going to be mid-sized bu businesses to small <clears throat> that are willing to pay, but not for long periods of time, but you can always guarantee they're there. The bigger clients are going to always pay way more, but the projects typically have a set lifespan to a point budget, and then they say, yeah, they have the W-2 talk, right? So understand your target market, because you can charge more in certain tar target markets than you could and not others. So how do you make more money? Well, there's three things-ish you can do. You can raise your rate, 
if I'm working, say, 40 hours a week, I'm charging $100 an hour, I'm making $4,000. I want to make more money, so I charge $200 an hour. There you go, AK. Whoop -de -doo. Or you can lower your overhead. What are your costs? I charge $100 an hour or $50 an hour because I have these expenses. Is there a way to remove them? Is there a way to buy a better computer that lasts longer, therefore I don't have to purchase a new one this year? Right? How do you, maybe you don't have an office, you do work at home to compensate for the fact that you want to pay, or you work at Starbucks, right? Or another coffee shop. You can also increase your hours. Increasing your hours is basically working your tail off. If, um, let's say you're working 20 hours a week and you want to spend the rest of it zenning out, okay, work 30 hours or 40 hours. That'll make more money. Um, increasing the likelihood of working with a client who's paying you more money than a usual client would, right? Those are the three main ways you can make more money. So here's my survival guide in a couple parts of what to do, not to do, keep you out of trouble. First thing, do not work for friends or family. I've, I see time and time again, people work for friends and family and it causes friction in relationships. I take my personal relationships very seriously and I do not mix friends or family. I would much rather educate them as, you know, like my dad, I would rather, much rather educate him on what he can and can't do, what to w look out for, and then trust in his ability to find someone rather than give him a reference and feel bad that that business relationship went sour. I just don't want that friction. I don't want, you know, to negatively. I love talking business with my family, but I don't like doing business with my family. Same with friends. Uh, do not negotiate price. Now, this is my personal thing. Some people are very different. They like to adjust. Me, <clears throat> I work for X per hour, period. If you don't like it, go find someone else. Now, that's not, it might say in standoffish, but I don't compete on price. If you want Jesse Warden, to come in on your project and kick tail and love what he does and energize your team and let's just, oh, it's going to be awesome. You're going to pay for that. If you want someone else who's cheaper, go ahead. You know, I think I'm better than a lot of those other people. I don't think I'm the best, but I think I'm damn close and I'm going to charge for it. You should think the same way about yourself. You should not negotiate price because then it starts attacking your conscience. Well, okay, this guy, you know, we can probably get him for less. Let's work him down. Then another client finds out that you work for less money. And then suddenly other clients say, well, he gave me a discount. He gave you, you know, you don't want to play that game. You, you're co you cost X because the market will bear it. You're capable of charging it. If not, move on. Find another client. Do not do fixed bid projects. There's some people who've got the balls to do that. I cannot understand how they make money. Fixed bid projects, if you don't know, is we're a client. We have allocated $10,000 to do this flash widget. Can you do it? My answer is no. Thanks, though. Now, if I'm looking for work, I'll say, well, let's, let's work on this. Maybe you could do a hybrid. You could say, like, or sliding scale, some people like to call it. These things have very low risk on this widget. I know that I can build these pieces for this amount of money in this time. This is not a service or a web service that I'm capable of handling. I don't, I'm not coding it. It's from some third party. I'm not going to be held accountable for their mistakes on this project unless you let me code it. So if they go over 20 hours and I have to work with them on bugs, you're going to pay for it. So how about that? $8,000, I can guarantee it won't cost more. Other than that, it could slide, it could be less, it could be more. It's really out of my hands. A lot of clients appreciate that honesty, and they'll go for it. So most fixed bid projects, I've always been ended up a nightmare. So I just I stay away from them. If they're big budget fixed projects, even worse. Part two, uh, do not do low price projects, AKA, I want to create a website for $200. Don't want to do that, man. It's, it's not worth your time. It's better to do it free or find some way to help them, get them up to speed, get them in your network. You know, if, if someone you like, uh, you know, you, you feel partial to, or maybe there's a way that they could advertise you. You know, there's always a way to work uh, for intangible things. You know, personal branding, the ability for this person to be a reference for you, you know, things like that. But if you want to make money, don't do low price projects. It's not worth your time. There's a lot of other people that pay you more. Most important thing, trust your gut. If a client makes you nervous, do not be afraid to say no. Say no. Look, you're making me nervous. I've got some bad you know, vibes from you. A couple other guys said that you don't pay on time or you treat your people bad. Trust your instincts, man. Just say no. It's not worth it. There's a lot of other clients that would love to have someone come build software for them that feels good about it. There's, a lot, I mean, there's, there's tons of work. Tons of work. You just got to you know, look for it. So don't, don't feel afraid to say no. Uh, Okay, this is the uncomfortable thing. Disclaimer, I am not a lawyer, and I highly advise you to seek legal counsel. What happens when a client doesn't pay you? And I don't mean $200, $500. I'm talking 
$20,000, $30,000, $50,000. They just don't want to pay you. You spent three months, you know, you, you got a mortgage to pay. What do you do? It's been my experience that about $20,000 or less, it's not worth fighting for. It's not worth your time that you charge per hour and your lawyer's fees to pursue that. Even if you get that money, the amount of time and frustration that you'll spend doing that is better spent elsewhere. I've seen a few people spend their time doing it for very little gain, and it's just not worth it. That's my personal advice. I'm not a lawyer. I, I, like again, again, I suggest you get it, but that's just my advice. If, if it's $20,000 $20, or less, let's move on.